Hey everybody, it's Brooke with The Buttered Home and welcome to my messy kitchen. Tonight we have a really great recipe to show you, one that will make your life so much easier. Now, a lot of you may have never heard of lemon curd, and I'm a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> But lemon curd is simply a sort of lemon flavored uh, cheese, almost like gelatin, but it's sweet. It's normally used for a topping on uh, cookies that are not real sweet, or in our case, we love it on our buttermilk pound cake. And you can find that recipe like this one at thebutteredhome.com. Now, my mother makes the best lemon cheese cake. Now, it's not a cheesecake, it's a lemon cheese cake. And what it is, is it's this layered yellow cake that has this beautiful lemon curd in between each layer. And if you are a fan of old fashioned recipes, then you know what I'm talking about. Now, lemon curd is traditionally made using eggs, egg yolks, uh, an acid like lemon juice, sugar uh, at low heat, typically over a double boiler. And much like banana pudding, you have to stand there with it and you have to stir it and you have to stir it and you have to stir it until it reaches the exact consistency that you want before you have scrambled eggs. So it can be kind of cumbersome, but I have found a recipe to make lemon curd using my electric pressure cooker that makes life wonderful. And I always have lemon curd on hand. We, like I said, we love it on shortbread cookies. We like it on pound cake. There's just no limit to what you can do. It's good just on toast and it is refrigerator stable for about a month. So we're gonna show you today how to make easy lemon curd in your Instant Pot or Milky Pot in a flash. Now, it's really simple ingredients. Most people have all these and I'm gonna show you how we whip that up to get together now. So in a large bowl, I am going to add in my lemon juice. And don't worry, you can get all of the measurements for this at thebutteredhome.com or in the show notes of this video. And then we have some melted butter that I have allowed to cool. And then we have some sugar, about one and a third cup of sugar. And I'm just going to mix those up so that that sugar can start to dissolve. And now to this, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of fresh lemon zest. And you can leave that out if you just want faint lemon, but we like for the lemon curd to be really lemony. So we put that tablespoon in there. And one little thing I'm gonna stop and show you right now. I have this wonderful grater zester it's most people call it a rasp and <clears throat> one good rule of thumb whenever you are zesting a lemon is I flip mine upside down so there's a trough here and I barely in one direction take it and just barely hit it in different spots the white pith you do not want to get because that is bitter so I suggest just moving in single strokes with a good rasp grater like this to get that wonderful, beautiful lemon zest. And you can just take it and slide it right out with the heel of your finger from that trough. So that is your easy lemon zesting tip right there. Now my sugar is almost dissolved. So I'm going to add in three whole eggs and one egg yolk that has been separated from the white. Now, the eggs are what make this a cheese or a gelatin. So it's real important that you get that extra yolk in there that they will, the yolks will firm during the cook process, but they won't cook like eggs. And the reason for that is the acid from the lemon juice. So we're gonna mix that up really well. And it's this beautiful bright yellow color. 
now. We're going to carefully take it and pour it, and I just have just a little pint jar here, and we're going to pour that into our jar, clean, sterilized jar, and then I want to leave about an inch, or just a, you're the first section of your finger from the top. Now, if you have smaller jelly jars, you can certainly pour this up. This will make two about two of those, but this usually makes about a, a pint and just a small, probably about a half a pint jar. You can also double this recipe to make more. And we're gonna put the lid on that, what's called finger tight. And if you hear anybody say finger tight, that just means that you can open it with one or two fingers. So you don't want it extremely tight, but you do want it tight where if you the lid will not come off. So into our electric pressure cooker, we have our trivet, and I've placed it inside, and then two cups of water. Then we're going to set our jar or jars on the trivet provided it's not too high. Now this trivet that I have is a little high because it has the feet on it. So I have another shorter trivet that I can use. If your trivet is the only one you have is too high to set the jars on, then you can take some aluminum foil and wrap it up in the bottom, or you can take a couple of these lids and place them on the bottom. You just want that glass to be off of the bottom of the pressure cooker. So we're going to set that in there and it sits just fine, just like that. And then we are going to secure our lid, okay? Now, the easy part of this is, is you take it and you seal the vent and then you set it for eight minutes and you walk away. When the machine beeps to tell you that it's off, I come in and I stop the cooking process. You can leave it on warm if you want to, it doesn't matter, but I just feel better knowing that I've hit that cancel or off button, and then I will let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then I'll come in here and I will carefully release any remaining steam in the pot and take the lid off, and then take a towel, or if you have a canning, jar lifter you can use it and take it out so we're going to cook this together and then we'll be back to show you the finished product hey everybody we're back our eight minute cook time has finished and we have allowed the milthy pot to calm down on its own uh, and release some of the pressure naturally for about 10 minutes and then i took a long spoon well, actually i took my jar grabber and just released <laughs> the remaining pressure in the pot and uh, carefully open the lid. Then my jars, well, what I did during the break is I had just a little bit left, so I took some out of one jar and just made two jars of it that were not quite full. So I carefully used my jar grabbers and lifted them out and then put them on a towel. And then I took another towel and I took the lids off very carefully. Now, there are a couple of different things you can do at this point. It's ready. We like it just like this. But if you wanted to let it cool just a little bit, you could press this through a sieve and get some of that uh, lemon zest out if you didn't want any texture in it whatsoever. But the one thing that you can do if you like it just as is, is just take a spoon and just stir it because you're gonna wanna take uh, sometimes the sugar will just separate just a little and you just want to just stir it and then put the lids back on and let it cool for about an hour on the counter before you put it in the refrigerator. Now I said you can press it through a sieve if you want um, or you can take an immersion blender and this will only work if you have a wide mouth jar because see it won't fit in a regular jar and just bump it just a little bit just to blend it up and it gives it just a little bit smoother of a consistency uh, but we like ours either way because it's plenty thick and it's wonderful and as it cools it will thicken even more so this is our version that we did in less than 30 minutes of our lemon curd this is fantastic, gosh, just on toast in my opinion.
If you like lemon, this is a lemon lover's dream. One of the things that I like to do during the holidays is to make a tart with a pie crust using whatever seasonal fruit that I have available. And this drizzled on top really adds something to it. And it's really good on just regular old pound cake too. So we hope you'll try this easy pressure cooker lemon curd and let us know how you like it. Be sure that you are subscribed to us here on YouTube and ring the bell so that you can be notified whenever we have new videos that pop up. For this recipe and so many more, be sure that you're following us on all of our social channels and that you head over to thebutteredhome.com and you can find just about any good old southern home cooking that you might want to find. We make cooking in your home easy. So, as always, join us here again for our next great video where we teach you how to make home-cooked things the easy way. From the buttered home to your home, we love y'all. Bye.